G'day everyone, Viv here. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Well, people on Facebook have spoken. I posted a picture of this little bit of razor wire. Um, and I said, look, if we get 20 likes, I'll put the tutorial up on YouTube. So here is the tutorial. We'll be making uh, some razor wire. It's a very cheap project. Quick, kind of. There's drying time obviously involved, but uh, let's get on with it. It's very easy. So the main components in this project obviously are these little uh, braces for the razor wire, those little cross pieces, and the wire itself. For the wire I've just used some 0.7 millimeter garden wire. You can find this in uh, any uh, home improvement store. And uh, I had to do a tiling job recently and uh, needed to pick up some tile spaces. These come in various thicknesses, one and a half mil, three mil, five mil. For my friends in the US, I'm sure you'll find the equivalent. Just go to your Lowe's or your whatever. Here I went to Bunnings Masters, we'll have these as well. Tile spaces. And they come in these little uh, plastic uh, crosses, obviously for putting in between your tiles, so you get the correct spacing between your tiles. And all we're doing is uh, taking those, sanding one edge flat on a, on a piece of sandpaper. I've used a belt sander because it's, it's faster, but uh, so I've already done that. Uh, just rub this on uh, some sandpaper and just <laughs> fairly straightforward uh, and flatten the ends. Now, these little spaces here do have some sort of uh, marks from their molding. Uh, I'll see if I can get a picture instead of holding it up to the camera. That shows it better. If you're not too fussed about that, then uh, this project works fine. And uh, from three feet away, you, you, you're not even going to notice them. So that's what we're going to use. For the base, I've chosen to use some uh, poster board. This is a two mil thick poster board. You could use some MDF. Uh, I've used the poster board because it was easy to hang around. It was just I had some hanging around. Uh, I was using it to base some uh, historical armies for Hail Caesar, which we'll talk about later on. Um, it's a bit flexible, so if the cardboard starts to warp as we're uh, gluing stuff onto it, you can always bend it back uh, very easily. So let's get on with it. First step is to use some hot glue. You could use some white glue or super glue or whatever you want and glue these down onto the base. There we go. It's pretty simple and straightforward so far. Time to put some white glue, some rocks and some sand. So as I mentioned, all we're going to use is some uh, white glue, some sand. This uh, I get in, in big tubs from uh, the home improvement store. Very, very cheap. And uh, I use uh, kitty litter. This I've sieved through a piece of, uh, you know, that uh, window uh, fly screen. Um, and I've just sieved it to get the smaller bits out and that's what I'll be using. It's very simple. We're just going to lay some PVA uh, all over this uh, piece and then uh, apply our flock, as it were, our, our sand and our stones. So there we go. Not too concerned if a bit of a glue gets up on those uh, supports there, that's fine. Apply some of these stones. We'll just sprinkle them on there. Wonderful, and we'll get rid of those. And then just our sand goes over the whole model. I've also applied a little bit of glue to the edges, so uh, hence the reason I've used a bit of paper, and we can just tuck the paper around and push this around in it to get the sand onto the edges of that cardboard. Just gently give it a gentle shake. We don't want too much of that stuff to come off at this stage. Now we just need to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and seal it. Okay, so my piece has been drying. It hasn't been that long, maybe 15 minutes or so. I did use the hairdryer on it. And you'll notice if you're using a hairdryer, it'll start to warp, the base will start to warp. So just uh, bend it back and, and flatten it back out. I've got um, some watered down white glue, some watered down PVA. This is quite heavily watered down, be four parts water to one part glue. Uh, a little syringe, you could use uh, a dropper bottle if you've got one. Um, or, or, or something similar, a little pipette or something, and some water, as you've seen me use before. This is water, it's got a little bit of finish in it, and uh, we're just gonna give this a, just a, a, a very light spray, not heavy at all, and then, uh, and then use our glue here to uh, seal this piece. And 
now we need to let this dry. Again, I'm gonna use a hairdryer just to speed the process up a little bit, uh, and then we'll be ready for painting. The next step is to prime it black. So um, you can see that my base isn't exactly uh, flat, but that's all right. We can just sort of bend it back into shape uh, because I've used the cardboard here, it's very easy. Uh, like I said, next step is to prime it black. I've already done that. I'm now gonna paint this in shades of brown and the uh, little posts here in a, in a metallic color. I'm gonna use an airbrush to do that just because it's easy for me and I've already got paint mixed for it. Uh, whatever color scheme you choose will be uh, sort of up to you how, how you paint it. But uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna do mine. It's very quick, it's very simple. And uh, we're almost finished. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna use browns. I've got a very dark brown here. You may not be able to tell the difference on the camera and this, this reddish one that I've used before. So uh, air compressor and everything is good to go. We're just going to uh, Whilst that's still wet, I'm just going to do the other colour as well. This is going to be very gentle, this one. There we go, we'll clean that in just a second, but uh, I'm going to dry this under a hair dry now, just to uh, speed up the process. A couple of layers of dry brushing, pick out the, the metal spikes, then we'll twist the wire. So the wire is fairly straightforward. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it's a 0.7 millimeter wire. It's just very thin. And we're gonna take a reasonable length, maybe one, two, about three meters of this stuff. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, I'm not 100% sure how much you'll need. And then the two ends, I've shown this before on another video a couple of years ago. Just twist these two ends together a little bit. like this, and then we're gonna pop that into a drill. So these two little things here, I'm just gonna pop into the chuck of my cordless drill. Make that tight. Now we're gonna twist this wire over here. So let's, let's move position. So to twist this wire, you're gonna take the, uh, the end of the loop, where you end up with this little loop here, and stick it over something that you're gonna be able to remove it from. So if you have a door handle that's got this sort of shape or something on it, or, or a nail that you've hammered to your table or something, uh, you just need something that you can remove it from. And all we're gonna do now is uh, uh, put some tension on this wire and then twist it. So keeping this wire taut, we'll just twist this, and normally I twist it until the drill starts to pull forward. There we go, you'll, not, you'll feel it when, it when the drill starts to pull forward. So let's get rid of the drill. We'll just unhook this from here, and then this end and the other end will snip off. There's our wire twisted, we just need to wrap it around something now. You could do it finer if you want, it's just a matter of twisting it for longer in the drill. I'm gonna use a hose because it's got a nice diameter. Anything round that you can wrap this around and then slide it off. So just quite literally just wrap it around. I like to keep the twists relatively close together and relatively tight. If you're using something like a garden hose, if you do it too tight, um, it'll be hard to get it off of the hose. So we just do this until the whole length is finished. There we go. So three meters of wire has made this little strip of uh, razor wire. Once you've got it off, you'll end up with something kind of like this and then you can flex it, twist it, bend it and shape it into whatever shape that you need it to be. Uh, I'm gonna wait until we get back to the desk and we can see how long our piece is and therefore how far I need to stretch this out or push it together and... Anyway, let's get on with it. Two layers of dry brushing. Big, big dry brush. We use this sort of orange color first. Just a little bit of this. You could just do one highlight if you wanted to but I'm gonna do the two of them, and uh, all, we're, all we're doing is just a dry brush, so. Nice and simple, second dry brush. I won't worry about rinsing that brush. Just a little more gentle with this one, just trying to hit those rocks. A Little bit of the sand.
There we go. Simple. Now I'm going to pick out these uh, struts here in just a, uh, a gunmetal. Bit of gunmetal grey. It's a Vallejo colour from the Flames of War range that they did with Battlefront. And uh, I'm just going to uh, smash a little bit of this on here. Just an old brush. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to sort of speckle it on there. You could after this do a wash and then maybe use a sponge to put some orange paint on there. So signifying the rust. But I'm just going to do this. It, this is going to be sufficient for the purposes of what we need it to do. And that's look okay on the tabletop from a distance. There we go. Painting is done. <clears throat> all we need to do is just add a little bit of glue, some flock. Stick our wire on there and we're almost done. So I've got a bag of uh, some homemade flock here and uh, if you haven't seen uh, my videos on how to make homemade flock, uh, you can find them on the channel or I'll pop a little uh, video here that you can, or a little link that you can link off and go and watch that video. Um, so all we're doing is fairly straightforward. A little bit of PVA onto this, just in sort of random spots. Maybe if you've got some areas where hot glue or you've got some of this silver color around the, the base onto the uh, base of the model, you can cover that up. And I'm going to throw this whole thing into my bag of flock. Not a huge fan of this patchy sort of behavior going on, but uh, oh well, what can you do? So almost finished there's our two pieces all we need to do now take a little bit of super glue and um, glue our our wire on top first thing I do though see these ends I just tuck them in just like that and then I'll put a drop of super glue on there to hold that same on the other side just tuck it in and then a drop of super glue on there to hold that and then um, we'll glue this down onto our piece. Take one side, stick it over the, uh, the end bit, bit of glue wherever it touches, just to help hold it in place. I'm going to use some uh, zip kicker or just an accelerant. And then uh, stretch it out, wrap it over the middle one. A couple of drops of super glue, get, I think you get the idea. And we're pretty much done now. We could uh, leave it like that if we wanted to. I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to take some, uh, some black ink and uh, you could use a wash, but I'm going to use an ink and just run a little bit over uh, the wire just to help give us that, uh, that extra sort of shading to the wire. There we go, that's all I'm going to do. Just a little bit on the top. You could go ahead and do the whole wire if you want to, but um, there's our piece finished. So there we go, nice, quick, simple project. Easy to make, cheap to make, relatively quick. Why wouldn't you have some? Base them in any sort of scheme that you want. Just twist the wire and wrap it around the edges of buildings and stuff, or across the top of a ruin or something. Uh, just the twisted wire alone is, is, uh, is awesome. And it's cheap, cheap, cheap to make and easy. Just need a drill, that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. See ya.